Okay, welcome back. Hour number three. We're going to go down to Los Angeles this hour to the west side of L.A., Santa Monica area, and talk to environmental research journalist Michael Collins, who is back with us tonight to bring us up to date on his research, his views, and his discoveries in terms of radioactivity, radiation, and other ugly issues that are showing up here on the West Coast and will only be intensifying as we move into the fall and the winter when the rains come. Michael, are you there? Yes, I am, Jeff. How are you? Really uh, doing as well as I can. Thank you very much. And I'm looking at your page right now. And for all of you who are not familiar with Michael's work, uh, he and his wife put a lot of effort into this site. It's a very interesting uh, message board as well. And if you go to the second Fukushima box in the center of my homepage and look for the radiation symbol, Go down one, two, three, four items. You'll see West L.A., Santa Monica, live readings. And you can click on that anytime at all. And Michael is kind enough to make his Inspector Plus available for all of us to see what's happening in Santa Monica. And right now, what's the read? I'm going to go to that page. It looks, are we seeing? uh, We are looking at uh, slightly below normal. That's 14. Uh, About 34 counts per minute. Okay. which worked out to be about zero, uh, 0.010 millirems per hour. Okay. And, uh, but what we do with this, Inspector Jeff, is we also look at other things. Uh, that, that we started the radiation station so folks in Los Angeles would have an idea of the ambient radiation in the air. Mm-hmm. And as you've talked about on your show, uh, fallout from Fukushima uh, generally comes down in precipitation, in rain, snow, sleet, hail. Uh, we haven't had a lot of that yet, but just like you said, the jet stream is going to shift uh, during the later months, and uh, rains will come to L.A. We've tested rain here that uh, was uh, high in radioactivity to a significant extent, and we've used the inspector that you can see uh, online there uh, to check Food, uh, now that's Japanese that's food. very interesting, and because I mentioned earlier that anything from Japan, be it edible or a medical device or automobiles, really is now under suspicion, and that's the sad truth of it. It sure is, and you know uh, what we have found has been disheartening. Now, what we know, how we can talk about these results. Uh, that uh, we would talk about for the first time on your show. It's Great, the, all right. Uh, upcoming investigation right. that uh, will look at all aspects of these meltdowns, the effects uh, on America, Canada, the world, uh, our government's lack of response, um, and where we're really at. But part of that is to try to find out where in the consumer product stream this radiation is showing up. Now, uh-huh. what we have found uh, in food is shouldn't be surprising. Uh, about a month after the meltdowns occurred, uh, Secretary of State Clinton uh, made a uh, not-too-publicized uh, agreement with the Japanese uh, to uh, allow Japanese food to continue to come into this country under normal inspection standards. Now, in our shopping for Japanese food, either nobody is checking it, or they're checking it and kicking it along, or something right. is broken down in the system. Well, normal radiation isn't checked for. I mean, a normal, practical approach to inspecting food would probably not check for radioactivity. I wouldn't think. Just That's wouldn't happen. Correct. Now, you know, uh, well, I'll tell you, just a few weeks ago, quietly, the Obama administration put an end to a... Uh, uh, at our ports, we had these big kind of Geiger counters that you would slide your container through, and we'd right. check for radiation that way. Right. Well, they don't work. They cost a lot, but they don't work. Oh, really? So, <laughs> so quietly, they ended that program and said, we're going to hand everybody handheld Geiger counters. Now, you know how hard it is to get a Geiger counter right now, and you know how much food comes in. How realistic is that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's not realistic at all. And the results we found in just the last week and just tonight uh, bear that out. For example, on August 24th, we got a very popular brand of uh, Japanese seaweed. And uh, buy it right here in L.A. Buy just it the, all over the, the place. The dried and stuff. Uh-huh. The dried stuff. People mm-hmm. love it. Tastes great. Uh, it was 54% 
higher than the background where we tested it in the bag. Oh, now, when wow. you have something mm-hmm. blocking uh, a source of radiation, mm-hmm. there's a kind of radiation that can be blocked with practically nothing, which is alpha radiation. Even the, the plastic wrapper would block a lot of the alpha output. That's right. However, if you were to ingest alpha, you'd be in a heap of trouble. Even mm-hmm. though you would excrete most of it, anything that would stay in your body could lodge itself in your body and uh, continue to radiate sure. for whatever the period of time the radionuclide uh, lasts, like uh-huh. cesium-137 uh-huh. with a half-life of 30 years. In 30 years, half of it will be gone. Mm-hmm. So we tested this seaweed with the bag. It's 54% higher than uh, background radiation. Took it out of the bag, and it was 67% higher than background radiation. So you picked up a lot of the blocked alpha. Correct, 22% and that, higher. Wow, wow, okay. 67% higher than the normal background radiation in the store. Uh, actually, in radiation where, station, wherever? We, we oh, you took it home. It okay, good. And came, came back here and, mm-hmm. and tested it here in a controlled environment where we could do uh, uh, backgrounds and Very stuff good. that we have a, a, a history of the data. Okay, now this comes from the ocean, folks, remember. I don't know where, but when you consider what the Chinese have found already, off the eastern shore of Honshu, you know we're in big trouble. So, okay, the seaweed in the plastic wraps, the dry stuff, obviously uh, not, you don't want to eat it. Hey, you know, if you don't know what's in it, are you going to eat it? Are you going to just throw caution to the wind? Majority of Americans and Canadians have done that. I mean, it's not easy trying to yeah. figure out what to eat. Now, you said that the uh, seaweed comes from the oceans. One of the reasons we concentrated on products that come from the ocean is because of the unknowable amount of water that has gone into the Pacific from trying to cool down the three melted reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Massive. Massive, astronomical Mm -hmm. amounts of water Mm -hmm. going into the Pacific. So we figured, hey, why don't we see if uh, we could test some Japanese fish? So we did. And this was tonight. We, and now, this is a spot check. What you heard before was uh, done averaging and very uh, uh, careful so you know absolutely that the mm-hmm. number you got is right. Mm-hmm. This is a spot check, but I've worked with uh, machines like this for 11 years now, and I, I know when it's topping out, if there's a little extra something in mm-hmm. the material you're testing mm-hmm. over background. In our yellowtail gill, yellowtail gill, mm-hmm. caught off of Japan, it was 54% over background <laughs> in the packaging. Haven't taken it out of the packaging. And you yet. don't know what isotope it is. We don't know for sure. We don't know, but there's a mm-hmm. chance we might find out what isotope it is because Arnie Gunderson, who uh, sure. uh, was the first person to, it has been on your show, uh, it certainly has been heard on your show, mm-hmm. he uh, has put a call out to folks who have Geiger counters uh, I have a, a, a Geiger counter on steroids, for lack of a better uh, term, mm-hmm. uh, because it detects alpha, beta, gamma, X-ray, yeah. and so-called nuclear radiation. He's invited people who have these instruments to send him water samples if they're found to be high. Now, we know there's been some hot rain in America, and just yeah. in the last week, uh-huh. uh, our friend in St. Louis who has a blog called Porter Blog, which you can find on our resource page. He tested uh, rain, and you can see it on video, 178 times background. I'm, I'm looking One at that right now, and uh, let, me, let me do this real quick. Let me play this for the folks so they can hear just a minute long. This is what uh, Michael's colleague in St. Louis, who's been reporting rather regularly about this, found when he wiped rainwater or the residue from that and tested with an inspector plus this one will be really hot seventeen times background thirty five times background fifty two times background sixty eight times background hottest reading we've had so far 86 times background, 100 times background, 
120 times background, 140 times background, 150 times background, 175 times background. Okay, and it topped out at 178 times normal background radioactivity levels. 178 times in a simple rain. All right, point well taken. <laughs>